All right, go ahead. Hi. Hi, all. Thank you so much for taking some time out today to um, to attend uh, the orientation for CRDIP. Um, this orientation will, will um, give you some basics about the program, about the requirements, and will allow you some time to ask any questions. So it's going to be basic information um, that will get you um, started for the summer and, and help you get your summer planned. Um, for this program in terms of our program requirement. So first slide. So I want to introduce the program. So the Cultural Resources Diversity Internship Program has two main goals. Um, the first is to uh, expose diverse undergraduate and graduate students ages 18 to 35 to cultural resources um, work experiences across the country. Um, and then it's an opportunity for the Park Service to meet uh, really talented young people in this field, up and coming in this field. And CRDIP has been around for, uh, for a while. It started in 1999 with a couple of interns and it's grown. So we've had um, hundreds of interns go through the program, which is wonderful. And just to give you an idea of how the, the program operates, um, Parks have to apply to get an intern. So they apply competitively to, to, to be able to host you. So they really want to host you. And um, it's, a, it's a cost share program, so they do get some assistance in, in, um, in, in funding the internship. Um, but it is a competitive program um, from the host perspective. It's also a competitive program for the, for your, from where you're coming from, um, it's a very competitive program. And so uh, I congratulate you for being accepted and hired. Um, we, we, really, we really want you as part of the program. Um, and we, we all work, both at ACE and myself and your supervisors, want to ensure you have a wonderful summer. Um, and the CRDI, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. You can introduce uh, Ace. All right. So um, I think uh, my name is Shane Barrow. I'm the National Director for uh, the American Conservation Experience Emerging Professional Internship Corps Program and uh, uh, honored partner of uh, Paloma and the National Park Service. And I think at some point during the presentation, we'll be able to introduce everybody here on our staff, because these are the people that you either have been working with or will be working with uh, throughout the year for whatever may come up. Uh, but just as far as the, uh, <clears throat> the program is concerned, the founding, my founding idea and concept behind, uh, behind our program is that conservation is a human endeavor and without us, there is no conservation. And um, so this program really kind of blends that together and it brings in, a, you know, sort of a, uh, the cultural, whether it's historic or prehistoric or, uh, and, and there's a lot of even more diversity in these programs uh, across the country. And as the years go by, that uh, this is the amazing amount of things that you'll hear a little bit about today uh, that are going on. And uh, so, but that is our program. And we are here basically to support you in your travels from academia to career. Our true metric is that, you, that we provide the highest value possible uh, experiences and that we can help those folks that want to work for uh, as a public servant in our natural resource, natural and cultural resource management realm, um, to, to to show them the way and uh, you know uh, guide the hands together to uh, to find that place because we're basically here to create the next generation of uh, of public servants that manage our public resources. Good. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see, AmeriCorps. Um, I uh, will. Uh, this might be a good time for George to introduce himself. Many of you uh, who are participating in the AmeriCorps program, some of you are not, um, will 
If you do not already know George, will know George uh, very soon. He is your guide. I'm going to turn it over to him to talk a little bit about um, about that program and uh, and education awards, and we can assist him because he's just joined us within the last uh, month or so. And uh, so, uh, any questions that might come up, feel free to ask. Uh, welcome aboard, everybody. I'm George Grigar. You will see periodic communication from me, mostly the bland compliance end of things, uh, just trying to keep keep the accounts and everything rolling. But essentially, AmeriCorps is just an addition to your experience that will provide, uh, hopefully, an education award at the end of that. After all your hard work, an additional uh, piece to take home with you and add. Um, some value to the internship. So uh, the the big takeaway for AmeriCorps is um, it is a separate entity and it has its own compliance. And so you might see some um, requirements from any one of your individual internships, but then the overarching AmeriCorps piece will have its own uh, needs for enrollment, its own needs for compliance at the end. So you might see kind of different things coming from me throughout the year, but I'm always available, so shoot me an email or give me a call if you ever have questions, um, especially on how to use your education award or how to stay in compliance throughout. Um, I think that some of you up. Yeah, and I think I think the for for those of you that haven't used utilized an education award, um, if it's related to education, um, it is it's it's available. You can use it for that as long as there is that justification. School student loans. Uh, computer equipment for classwork. It's valid for up to. It's it's actually doesn't expire anymore, does it? It used to be valid for seven years. Still, still seven years. So it's valid for seven years, and it is transferable to offspring now. That was a new thing that occurred um, for for educational purposes, and that's my depth of knowledge about the education award specifically. I'll just <laughs> add some graduate programs may match your education awards if you've earned one. They they may be willing to. Uh, match that award value. There are options to take it out as cash, but you do get penalized. There are options to travel creatively with education in mind. There um, it is, I guess, it's quite a valuable piece there that you can use in different ways. So think creatively and uh, get in touch with us if you have an idea, um, if you don't see something online. Also know that this presentation will be available as a PDF that we're going to talk about where you can access. And these uh, links here are clickable that you can do inside the PDF and they'll take you to find out more information on how to use your education award um, with AmeriCorps and other pieces of information. So that will be available later. Paloma, you want to take this? Sure. So um, what you're seeing is um, a map of the CRVIP project sites across the country. So uh, these guys are located in almost all, no, all, all the, almost all the regions. Um, and um, um, we have 17 locations and 21 CRVIP positions. Um, and in addition to diversity of location, you guys are working on um, really different types of projects. And so um, one of the benefits of, of having so many different projects is that we can learn from each other and learn what other um, types of cultural resources work is going on in the Park Service. And that's, we're going to talk about blogging um, and the requirement for that. But um, this, this map just shows the, the variety of places. We have rural sites and urban sites and, and all in between. And the list of positions. Um, so again, we, we do have one, we have two sites um, that um, are non-NPS, and that's a unique feature of CRVIP in that we can have interns that are not at NPS, but as you may or may not know, lots of other federal agencies are responsible for cultural resources work. So um, we help host interns who work on cultural resources in other federal agencies. Okay, um, your roles and responsibilities. Um, so in addition to, um, 
to, to your internship and the work of your internship, there are some responsibilities um, as, of being part of CRDIT. Um, one of them is to attend webinars, and, and that is a responsibility and a requirement unless you are out in the field and working on a project. Um, we won't have a whole, a whole lot of webinars, um, five, so it's basically um, one every two weeks. And we will have a list of those webinars. Um, this is the first of them. Um, and so it is, it is a requirement to attend them. If you cannot attend them, do let Shane or Peter know. Um, and again, unless you are going to be out in the field doing some project work, um, it's a requirement that you attend, and your supervisors know that you have to attend as well. Um, present projects. So our last webinar will be presentation style, and we will get into detail about the with directions for for the presentations. But we will um, have all our DHA interns um, present, and we will have additional instructions for other interns to present as well. Um, and these are short presentations, so um, short PowerPoint or, or however else you want to present your project. It can be a variety of mediums. Um, it doesn't have to be PowerPoint. Um, and short, short projects, short summaries of, of your experiences. Um, blogging. Blogging is a requirement. Um, ACE has um, a wonderful blog um, that features blogs and posts from all their programs, and so you'll get to contribute to that um, um, and um, uh, further in the webinar, ACE will explain how to submit those blog posts. So we do want you to blog every, every two weeks, um, and blog posts don't have to be long. Um, so the next webinar actually in, in two weeks, in a little less than two weeks, um, we'll talk about blogging in detail, and I'll show you some examples and give you um, sample topics, but blogs are a way for you to share um, your experience at the park, um, your work, what you find interesting and what you don't find interesting. Um, um, it's a great way to share pictures and videos. Um, so, so we'll get into detail in the next webinar about blogging, but that is a requirement um, and ACE will talk about how to submit those blogs. ACE will also explain how to submit hours and weekly reports. That is a requirement. Um, and also to have a wonderful time um, and learn a lot um, during your summers. All right, Shane. Tim. <laughs> All right. Tim, so Tim. All right. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. So this year we're going to be use, utilizing Google Drive and a Google group um, for communication and also for transferring of files, for uploading your information, pictures, that kind of thing. Um, it'll be a way you can direct message people. Um, don't have to necessarily go through us, but you can talk to other interns that are part of this program, um, as well as uh, general questions to the entire group. Um, I don't know if you're familiar for those who are unfamiliar with Google Groups, but basically there'll be an address um, that we will send out to you that you will um, send any email you want to that address and it goes out to everybody. Um, or you can put in individual participants' names and that will go to that individual person. So um, we have a fuller structure. I'm going to stop the, stop the slideshow for just a minute and show you um, what the fuller structure is going to look like. Um, basically, what we're going to have is you will see um, there'll be at the top level there'll be uh, about five different folders, um, and in the first uh, folder you'll see there's an individual by name. You'll see a list of all your names and where you're at, um, and these are going to be where you're going to put your specific information, um, files that are specific to you. Um, and then there'll be up above. There are um, going to be. Um, go ahead, Tim. Uh, are, are you showing something on the slide? Uh, no, it, it should be on the screen. Are, are you not seeing the screen? No. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Let me let me reshare it. So let me reshare my screen here. 
Okay, do you guys see my, um, you see the yes. website right now? Okay, good. Now, now we see the Google Drive, yes. All right, perfect. So um, in this first folder is your individual intern files by name. If you double click on that, you'll see all the people's names. Um, in this folder, you'll only have access to your specific folder. So this is just for you to put upload your files. You won't be, you'll see everybody else's folders, but you won't be able to access them. Um, in the next folder is the group resources. So this is where we're going to put um, different pieces of information, like this slide presentation, for example, um, uh, and other things that'll help you along your process. Um, and they'll be broken out basically on things that come from us, things that come from Paloma, and then things that you guys upload to us. Um, I'll just mention these are only as valuable as you uh, make them. So if, if there's useful information you want to share with the group, and um, whether it be documents, maps, images, this Google Drive structure is hopefully uh, where you'll be able to share that in a sort of consolidated, useful manner. And uh, you know, kind of to, to stray off that topic a little bit too, think about this cohort um, and. As a personal example, uh, my youth cohort back when uh, when I was going into a federal agency, similar capacity, um, uh, most of those folks that I went through still actually work for or actually work for different federal agencies. And you'd be amazed at how many interns I now have that I'm able to create projects in place all over the country uh, with um, my cohorts that are now, you know, running programs or even running offices uh, around the country. So, so you guys are going to, you know, the more you interact and the more you share, the uh, more value beyond just the work and the experience and the exposure at your specific site you're going to have. Okay, so for the next one, um, you will be required as part of your program to upload a bio. Um, so there's a folder in here for you to upload your bio. Um, this is for the final draft only. So if, you, for example, you want to want some one of us to take a look at it before you post it to everybody else, leave that into your individual intern file folder first, and we can go in and take a look at it, offer any notes, suggestions, and then uh, place, it, uh, place it into the uh, final draft when you're ready. Uh, also know that we're going to be doing that in uh, Google Docs. So if you have something in Word format, that's fine. It's really easy to convert into Google Doc. Um, if anybody has any questions about how to use Google Suite, Google Docs, Google Sheets, um, that kind of stuff, please uh, reach out to us, and uh, we will be more than willing to help you out with that. The next folder is for your blog posts. So that's where, um, like Paloma was talking about, you're going to be blogging um, every few weeks. You're going to be uploading, and they don't have to be long. They can be just as simple as a picture and a caption um, if you want to. Um, this is something that tells a little bit of a story about what you're doing, maybe where you, who you are, where you're from, and how um, what you're doing relates to you or your community, or how um, something, maybe something interesting that most people didn't recognize or don't see. Um, it's interesting as we've had um, the last couple of years we've done this program, um, the interns find little pieces of history all over the place that people didn't even, like that worked there, had either forgotten about or didn't remember being there. Um, and it helps to kind of bring that to the forefront. So um, those fun little things are the kind of things you want to blog about. Um, and then the last thing is, last folder is for photos. Um, any photos you guys want to share, that's totally fine. Just remember that, you know, that they have to be within, you know, the general policy and that they're, um, if you're taking a picture of someone else, um, somebody not related to the program or related to the park system, like for example, a guest or something like that, um, know that we will have to get a release from them if we want to use their picture. So that's usually really hard to do. So generally try not to, uh, to include other people. Um, if it's a wide open like shot with just some people in the background, that's fine. But if it's a specific person that you're taking a picture of, just be weary of, of sharing that because um, just remember all those photos are going to be public um, at some point. So we would really like pictures of, of you yes. participating in your experience. Yes. <clears throat> Can I add one thing about photos? Um, yes. One other thing to keep in mind is to be um, just aware if you're taking photos 
in a place um, where there may be um, archaeological sites that are where the location is protected, um, and your supervisor and who you're with, who you are with, would know. Um, and you know, use your judgment about where you are and and if that might be the case. But just keep that in mind. Um, some some uh, resources shouldn't be um, publicly displayed um, in in photographs and, and publicly available. Perfect. All right, um, so that's the, uh, the Google Drive and Google Group. Um, the other thing is with Google Groups, you'll be able to go to a page and it will have, um, like everything will be stored in a way you can search or review back in conversations. So if you have a, a string of different emails, you'll be able to go back and read those later if you want to. Tim, I have a question. Yeah. So we're using a different format this year. Is there any way we can share the previous year's information? I am going to try to do that. I don't know for sure that I can. Yet. Okay. Well, we're going to try to share what's been done in the past. Uh, so with you. We will for sure be able to share uh, past pictures and past presentations, um, and obviously past blogging because those are still up on our blog, um, and we'll show you where those resources are. So those those resources will be available to you. It's the individual conversations that we are we may not be able to get back so um, next safety safety um, Paloma do you want this or do you want one of us to take it um, yeah why don't, why don't you guys take that I'm gonna let uh, since you haven't met uh, <coughs> Peter yet I'm gonna he's our uh, our national lead for the national all National Park Service programs and so I'll let him talk about safety so you can get to know him Hi there. I uh, just briefly, I'll mention what my role is. Uh, I manage uh, our, our partnerships with the National Park Service from cradle to grave, so to speak, um, establishing new partnerships and um, establishing the budgets and, and parameters for the positions and recruiting um, with assistance of our team. And then uh, I'm, I'm available as the main point of contact uh, throughout the internship um, for any issues that arise, whether it be reimbursement or travel issues, making sure that your Charlie card is working, you name it. Um, I'm here to assist administratively and, and professionally. Um, so our number one priority um, at all times should be safety. Um, we want to make sure that um, really the only way to have a successful time is to have a safe time uh, in your internship. So we've provided a, a presentation in your enrollment. Um, many of you have hopefully already reviewed this. If not, um, you know, please do so. There, it's basically a PowerPoint. Um, not all of those elements in the PowerPoint will be relevant to your position, but they're great to keep in mind um, when, if you are asked to do something that, that you may not have been planning to do that day. Always make sure that you've got an appropriate PPE and, and um, training and instruction to do that activity. Um, always refer to your NPS supervisor first um, if you feel at all uncomfortable about the uh, safety parameters for that activity. Um, and uh, your your supervisor and mentors in the field with NPS or with your hosting agency, they'll be the best place to start. Um, but if you're ever uncomfortable with what you're being asked to do, please bring it up with myself or with uh, with you, um, Paloma. Ideally, with your supervisor on site first. And then the last part we want to talk about um, from a logistics standpoint. Um, for this part is communication. So one of the things we want to make sure and uh, stress to you is that communication is critically important, especially since you have a pretty condensed um, internship. You don't want to let time go by where you may have a question and you're not sure what you should be doing and something doesn't get done and it was only because you just didn't know what to do and you didn't reach out to somebody. So. Um, we are always available via email, via phone. Um, so if you have any kind of questions, some anything really that you just don't ha aren't certain about, please reach out to us. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find the answer for you. Um, so please don't just uh, you know kind of sit there going, oh shoot, I don't know how to do this, but ugh. you and know. Then, um, uh, along with that, um, uh, this is Shane again. Is you guys are in a you know an interesting place. So you are trying to impress not only an office but an organization. And sometimes you're like you're trying to figure out well, well how do I bring this topic up? Well, we 
um, we represent both the Park Service and you. We have both sides' best interests, but we're a neutral party, and we're there to uh, make sure that this program is a success for both. And, and so it's always good to just give us a call. And, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty broad exposure to things that happen out in the world amongst interns and in offices and inner office relationships and, you know, you name it. Um, so it's always, you know, always good and valuable to have somebody to talk to um, where our conversations will remain uh, closed and private and we, uh, we can offer up um, opinions and uh, you know how you can proceed in the end it will be you that makes the decision on how you would like to proceed but uh, but we're here and uh, so use us and then the last part is if there's an emergency um, contact your site supervisor right away um, if you have an injury or if you have something that just really you're uncomfortable with that you think is a safety problem please contact your site supervisor and then immediately after that contact us. Um, we need to be made aware of those situations um, so that we can handle it appropriately. Um, so don't, don't try to handle that kind of stuff on your own. Timesheets. Um, Timesheets are required. Um, you will not get uh, your stipend if you do not turn in your timesheets. Um, so if there's a situation, however, where let's say you're going to be in the field or you're um, away from, you know, you're going to be away for an extended period of time where you may not be able to get your timesheet in on time, please communicate that to us ahead of the time or um, email, call, that kind of thing. That way we know and we can reach out and take care of that situation. Um, most timesheet issues can always be handled and, and taken care of in that fashion. We may not need your actual timesheet, either by paper or electronically, right then and there. We can always take care of it a little bit later. We just have to know that that's going to be an issue before it kind of happens. Uh, the way timesheets work is you will be on a, um, we do every two weeks, um, and timesheets uh, are should be submitted on either Friday or Monday the following uh, week. But they're, um, if we don't receive it by Tuesday, that's where we're going to start running into issues. So we want to make sure that that uh, that we get all of those problems resolved. If it's something you have a question about your timesheet, either hours or you're not sure about was this training or was this work or service or that kind of stuff, um, reach out to us. And when all else fails, just fill something in, and then if we have to revise it later, we can certainly revise it later. Don't don't sit there and not submit your timesheet just because you're a little like you don't have a, a clear idea of exactly what, what to be filling it out. So. Uh, and on that note, you'll know when timesheets are due because this day we've got it on the federal schedule, so everybody else in the office will be scrambling to get their timesheets done and submit it. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the other thing is, too, you will be getting email reminders if you don't submit your timesheets. Um, so we will uh, be doing that. Um, background check reimbursements. So for those of you that had to uh, submit for a background check um, and pay for that out of pocket, um, we have a reimbursement process for doing that. Um, mainly you'll reach out to probably Peter first um, and or Zoe um, for doing uh, reimbursements for that. Um, please don't sit on them. Try to get, to get them to us as soon as possible. Um, there will be a resource in the Google Drive um, on how to handle that as well. Um, and then uh, any other resources or reimbursements that happen that you get approval for, um, those will um, be handled the same way. Um, and then your travel allocations. So, um, Shane, you want to talk about the travel allocations real quick? I would say almost all um, of you will be receiving a uh, $640 uh, travel. So basically, it's more of a relocation um, uh, expense. Some of you might not have relocated for very far, and uh, so the best way is to get that to you in a, in a check um, uh, right up front. Those of you that are in AmeriCorps are going to have to have to have a an additional one day contract that we will be sending out, and if you have not already received that, uh, you will be shortly, um, so that we can we can allocate and uh, and get that. Uh, that funding presented to you in compliance with uh, the this external 
AmeriCorps regulation that George was speaking about. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so please get that back to us and then we'll get those out um, probably, well, depending on when you're starting, but probably in the next pay period or so, you'll see that, uh, that allocation uh, show up on your direct deposit that you've already set up. Cool. And that is out of the kindness of, uh, of Paloma's guidance to, uh, to assure that, uh, that, that people's uh, needs and relocation expenses are met. <coughs> and that's really, really, it's pretty rare uh, for experiences that we have to have that uh, addition to, um, to the living allowances. Yeah, no, it's, it's really um, a really good benefit to have that relocation bonus. And some of you are traveling to, to new places, and so we want to encourage that, and the relocation bonus helps with that. So the webinar schedule, um, I will dive into that. Um, the, the, the next webinar is June uh, 14th, and I know some of you are going to start before that, and some of you are starting a little bit later, so we try to hit it in the middle um, with June 14th as another introductory webinar. We're going to talk about writing blogs, um, professionalism in the workplace, and some, some other workplace topics. And that'll just be an hour long, um, and it will be 3 p.m. Mountain Time. No, 3 p.m. Sorry, um, that's 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Sorry, I think, I, it, I think it was. Okay, I was I was oh, momentarily no, confused. <laughs> no, I think you are right. I think. I, I'm trying to remember. I think we did decide you wanted it at five o'clock Eastern, which would be three o'clock Mountain. Right. For yeah. that one, yeah. for that, for June 14th only, it'll be 5 p.m. Eastern, um, 3 p.m. Mountain. And I know 5 p.m. Eastern is a little later than, um, and some of you may be working, but um, we had to accommodate some schedules, um, and so it'll be 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I do want to point out before I go further that um, your supervisors know this, but your attendance to the webinar should be counted as work time, as is as is writing the blog. So that's part of your work. So you you aren't required to do your 40 hours of regular work plus this. And um, oops, looks like um, a lovely screensaver. <laughs> um, you shouldn't you shouldn't um, have to do this outside your your normal work. Um, and let us know if you're having any issues with your supervisor in allowing you to attend these or do your blogs, because that is part of um, your work week. The the next webinar, July 11th. Um, oh, is that 3 p.m.? Okay, we're, we'll talk about the time. We may, oh, Eastern, I'm sorry, yes, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and um, ACE is going to present a webinar on applying for federal employment. Um, a fun topic. Um, there's a lot to know about how to apply um, to a, a federal a federal job and, and navigating USA jobs. And then the week of July 18th, not sure of the date yet, um, I'll do an introduction to the National Register. Um, and I do this because the National Register of Historic Places um, is a great program to know about, um, especially if you're in the cultural resources field. It is um, at the heart of the National Preservation Program. Um, and so I'll just go over real basics about the program. Um, some of you may be working more in depth with the National Register Program this summer, and some of you may not. But um, it's a really important program to know about if you're going to work in this field. So that's an introduction to the National Register. And then our last webinar is our wrap-up final webinar at 3 o'clock, and that's a two-hour one because we will have presentations. Um, and you'll need to have your presentation materials shared on Google Drive by August 1st. Um, and we will also ask that you look through each other's presentations before the webinar. Um, and we ask you to do this because um, we only have two hours, and um, all of you may not present, but even if, um, even if some of you present, that's, that's still a lot of material. And we'd rather you take a look at the material ahead of time and, um, and um, think about what you may want to ask um, um, 
in, ask another uh, intern um, to, to save some time and for you to be familiar with another with another intern's project before before the um, before the webinar. Um, and we're not asking you to study it in depth, but do take take a quick look. Take a look. The one thing to add to this is that the, yes. uh, the DHA people, um, if you're in the DHA program, you are going to be required to do the final presentation, um, as well as the Olmstead um, people. But if you are not DHA or Olmstead, then we're also going to have kind of a competition um, for people that want to present. And if you get selected for that presentation, then we're going to have a little prize for you as well. So it'll be a way to kind of um, get your creative juices going and, and get you uh, excited to try to do a presentation and show your peers what you've been working on. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so we'll have more details about that, but we're going to go the, the competitive route. So we do want DHA interns to present, as well as the Olmstead team um, to, to present on their summer projects, and then we'll have more information about um, our, our presentation competition and the prize for that as well. Cool. All right. Oh, yep. That that is that is the bulk of, of our introduction. Um, we will take any questions. And remember, if you want to text me your question, that's fine, and I'll read it out as well. Or you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. No questions. Wow. Um, Shane, I have a question. I forgot to ask you this earlier. Are we doing cards again this year? Doing uh, business cards? cards? The CRDIP cards? Yeah. Um, yeah. We have. Uh, we'll be sending those out with uh, everybody's um, uh, shirts and hats and everything. Uh, those, should, those should ship out uh, by the end of tomorrow. Okay. Great. So if anybody here hasn't gotten us there, um, signed up and, and gotten all signed up with us and provided their uh, their shirt size, uh, we're going to send you whatever size we guess. So mm -hmm. I would recommend if you haven't uh, filled out your DocuSign paperwork, uh, do that now uh, or you're going to get what you get. So I just found out about that. I think I may have just gotten the email today, but that the... I was just wondering where I would find that because I just got put into this yesterday, so I'm still a little. <laughs> so it's it's basic. I think it's about the uh, about page four of, of that DocuSign document right up top. It says select the size, uh, a, a, a shirt size, and, and then uh, and then we'll have that and be able to uh, get it in to the order. So here was a, a question that came from Haley. Haley asks, uh, so clarification, we all should do presentations, but only particular programs have to present them on August 3rd? Um, yeah, go ahead, Paloma. Oh, no, great question. No, so only if you only have to do a presentation if you're going to present. So those who are in um, direct hire authority positions um, will need to do a presentation and present, and we will also have um, our presentation competition, um, which will we will send out more details on, um, but um, the, only those who, who will be presenting need to, to prepare a presentation. So, uh, Paloma, maybe a little more clarity, you know, when we talk to the, the, everybody is going to be, or not necessarily everybody, going to be putting together their project, and a lot of people are presenting to their offices or, you know, somewhat. But in this regard, that might be some. This this is the a next step. Um, I even had somebody ask me if they could record the presentation that they're providing to their park uh, oh, and use course. that as a presentation. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Another question is uh, when are the T-shirts going to be sent? Um, the answer to that is they're going to be sent out over the next few days. Um, as we get the packs um, all packed up and, and shipped out. Yeah, for those of you starting on Monday, we're going to get them off. Uh, we're we're going to pack them. We're packing them as we speak, but uh, get them off, sh shipped out by uh, by tomorrow. And then uh, and then the ones that are starting a little bit later, we'll get them off. Uh, you know, tomorrow or early next week. I'll just mention if you if you get a uniform that you requested a certain size and it's not a good fit, definitely let us know. Um, we're not looking to have you 
be unprofessional or uncomfortable in the uniforms that we provide. Um, so if there is concern about what you received, definitely let us know. Um, we will provide shirts, hats, uh, and stickers and patches. But beyond that, um, special requests, uh, that's going to be yeah, case they're, by case. Uh, they're very cool. This is the CR Dip one, right? Yep, that's cool. Yeah. Dip one. This is last year, so they're tiny bit different, but let's see if they can get this in there. Right there. They have a really cool logo on the back. Yeah, really, really cool shirts. That, uh, that Paloma allowed us to make, and uh, we appreciate that. I'd like yeah. to have something highlight this cool program. Yeah. Okay, next question is, um, uh, real quick, uh, how should we set up their um, AmeriCorps account for CRDIP if one has already been, um, if somebody's already served with AmeriCorps before? So, uh, you will have your existing account, so your password will work and your username will work, and if it doesn't, you can create a new password and username. That's step five in the orientation email that many of you should have received. Step six occurs after uh, I enroll you in another kind of third party platform that then will trigger an email to you. You don't necessarily need the email, but once I enroll you on my end, uh, you can then go in and fill out an enrollment piece in your My AmeriCorps account. So that uh, that comes and goes with each AmeriCorps term. So this would just be the same AmeriCorps account, but a new enrollment form. Um, I am trying to redo the wording in step six on those emails going out. So if you have any confusion, if something doesn't make sense, um, just shoot me an email and I'll get you some more clear questions. Uh, or clear answers in that. Um, does that help for answer your question for now? Yeah, it should. Um, and then Jeanne asks, uh, where will the emails be coming from? Are they going to be coming from you? Um, some of them come from DocuSign, correct? Uh, the, e the email in particular would come from epayments.gov. E if there's any moment where, where what we've provided is not clear enough, um, don't hesitate to give us a call. It can save you a lot of time to just get on the phone and give us a ring. Um, I know that I myself communicate by text a lot with interns for quick questions. So um, you may find that that works well also um, for just a brief like, hey, I'm not sure I understand this. Um, but we're always available via the phone. Email tends to be a slower way to communicate. Just a heads up, we have a high volume of email as you might imagine. But um, we'll always get to your email, but it may take longer than a phone call or uh, text. Right? And then the email about the um, uniform, that's in your DocuSign um, packet that you filled out. One of the questions in there is about <coughs> your um, shirt size. So if you're looking for that specifically, it's in the DocuSign that you, uh, with the information you filled out for registration. Um, Alec has a quick question about backtracking about the shirts. Are they going to be sent to their houses or are they going to be sent to their locations where they're working? Yeah, I think on that form we asked what, where it's the locations where they're working. Yeah, for they sure. Be waiting there. Yeah. 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 So and and so you know, sometimes with those offices, they usually go to a, a mail stop. So there may be a collective area where packages are are distributed. They may not I mean, they may not be delivered to your desk. You may have to go to a central location where the packages are. To pick them up. If it's not ready waiting for you when you start your internship, check with your on-site supervisor. If they don't know where it's at, um, refer back to us and, and we can hopefully track it down um, or resend if it got waylaid. Occasionally packages don't end up where they were addressed to. Cool. All right, any other questions? All right, uh, the last slide, of course, we're going to put up here. Here is contact information. Um, so uh, Peter, there's his number and his email. Uh, Shane, his number and email. And then obviously Paloma, her e uh, number and email. Um, I do want to give a, a shout out to Zoe Moscow. I don't know if you can see her on the camera, but Zoe, please introduce yourself. I'm sure folks have already gotten to know you a bit. All right. Hi, guys. Congratulations to all of you. It's a really exciting opportunity. And like everyone has said, it, it definitely is really competitive. I am um, the National Park Service Recruitment Specialist. Um, so I have been in contact with a few of you 
Uh, you might have seen DocuSign coming from me, maybe your enrollment instructions. Um, and as Peter was mentioning, sometimes email can get a little bit backed up for these three folks that you're seeing on the screen here. But if you do have um, a question and you prefer email, I have a lot less coming through than those guys. So you can always email me. And, um, and yeah, congratulations again, and, and feel free to reach out. Cool. And one last question came from Tyler. He's talking about uh, a, a group chat, keeping in a group at, chat to get in, in touch. Um, Tyler, don't worry about that. We are going to have a, um, that's one of the Google Group's uh, main projects is to keep that communication open and be able to talk amongst everybody, as well as you'll be able to Google chat through that group as well. Um, that will be able to um, keep those uh, communications open. So yes, we highly encourage you all to talk to each other and, and keep in contact with each other. So we'll be providing you the mechanism to be able to do that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording if there's no more questions. Paloma, do you have anything to close on? Or? No. That's Sorry, it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It was great to, uh, to meet you guys. And I, I can't wait to read about um, your summer projects. I, I really mean that. I absolutely love reading about your summer projects. <laughs> there was one more question that was coming in there. Yeah, sorry, you said that it would be in the packet, but I never got any packet because this all happened within like an hour for me yesterday. So I was wondering if like I could have that like sent to me by PDF or anything like that. Okay, well, uh, well uh, Zoe and I will uh, make sure that you get that um, immediately. Yeah, we'll follow if it, if it hasn't made it to you. Yep, we got it. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We hope this has been informative. Again, please reach out to us if you can um, with any questions after this, um, anytime you can. Um, and we will be more than happy, uh, happy to help you. And welcome, and good luck, and have fun. Yes, thank you.